everybody this one is called slavery equals the roman cult or it could be roman cult equals slavery they both work back and forth uh anyways copies of these documents can be found in my private group at yahoo called administering your public servants for a complete set of youtube videos with private information shares and dvd with over 50 searchable law dictionaries and other books and forums contact me privately at engineerwin at yahoo.com donations to support this work are appreciated but for the satanist order follower revenue officers operating in their private capacity under the federal tax lien act of 1966 i have to put in this little disclaimer because i prefer a gold or silver coin but as an extremely less desirable alternative i can accept a commercial paper the ious the federal reserve notes the paypal gifts the checks the money orders etc send me an email for particulars this is uh Papal Bull Dumbed Versus, uh, 18th of June, 1452. Pope Nicholas V issued the Papal Bull Dumbed Versus on 14th of June, 1852. It authorized Alfonso V of Portugal to reduce any Sarsans who were Muslims and pagans or any other unbelievers, that means anybody who's not Catholic, okay, to perpetual slavery. This facilitated the Portuguese slave trade from West Africa, the same Pope wrote the bull Romanus Pontifex on January 5th, 1455 to the same Alfonso. As a follow-up to the Dumbed Versus, it extended to the Catholic nations of Europe dominion over discovered lands during the Age of Discovery. Along with sanctifying the seizure of non-Christian lands, it encouraged the enslavement of native non-Christian peoples in Africa and the New World. Um, we weighing all and singular, uh, this is text from it, uh, we weighing all and singular the premises with due mediation and noting that since we had formerly uh, by our letters of ours granted among uh, other things free and ample faculty to the aforesaid King Alfonso to invade, search out, capture, vanquish, and subdue all Sarsens and pagans whatsoever and other enemies of the Roman cult uh, wheresoever placed and the kingdoms, dukedoms, principalities, dominions, and possessions, and all movable and immovable, immovable goods, whatsoever held and possessed by them, and to reduce their persons to perpetual slavery, and to apply and appropriate to himself and his successors the kingdoms, dukedoms, counties, principalities, dominions, possessions, and goods, and to convert them to his and to their use and profit. And by having secured the said faculty, he, the said King Alfonso, or by his authority, the aforesaid infant, justly and lawfully has acquired and possessed and doth possess these islands, lands, harbors, and seas, and they do of right belong and pertain to the said King Alfonso and his successors. So it uh, basically, it's the Roman cult that's responsible for the slave trade, okay? That's exactly who's responsible for all of this. In 1493, Alexander VI issued the papal bull uh, Inter Serrera, stating uh, one Christian nation did not have the right to establish dominion over lands previously dominated by another Christian nation, thus establishing the law of nations. Okay, so the Roman cult is behind the law of nations too. That's all part of another video. And so, together the Dumb Diversus, the Romanus Pontifex, and the Inter Serrera came to serve as the basis and justification for the doctrine of discovery, the global slave trade of the 15th and 16th centuries, and the age of imperialism. Okay, so that's all coming from the Roman cult. And so, and we've only just begun. <laughs> this is the lines of demarcation of Pope Alexander VI and the Treaty of Tordesillas, um, uh, 1493-1494 by uh, Samuel Edward Dawson, uh, which was uh, published in 1899. Uh, this is from the Transactions of the Royal Society of Canada, second series. Anyways, on page 471, it says, If therefore we put aside the conventional law or treaty law of nations, it will be seen that modern international law is founded on the Roman law and on the canon law, which latter was carried over all Europe by the Roman Church, for even in England up to the time of Edward III, the Lord Chancellor was always Roman cult. Okay, well, they're still Roman cult. They just have a, their bar, okay, and that's Roman cult. So martial law equals Satanism equals slavery. 
We have military government. See Texas and other American states are under military occupation video. See the Alberta and other Canadian states are under military occupation video. See the martial laws here video. Martial law works on presumption. Whenever the Uniform Commercial Code creates a presumption with respect to a fact or provides that fact is presumed, the trier of fact must find the existence of the fact unless and until evidence is introduced that supports a finding of its non-existence. And so it all works on presumption, so you have to defeat their presumptions. And their presumptions are that you're one of the slaves, okay? You're, Guinness, innocent, you're guilty until proven innocent. At common law, you're innocent until proven guilty. Well, at, uh, under Roman law, you're guilty until proven innocent. And uh, you're incompetent. That's why they're representing you. They want to sell you into slavery. We're going to talk about that. The Georgia Department of Driver Services. This is a letter. It's a three-page letter. Um... And I just want to uh, show the letter. Uh, we're going to talk about this stuff at the top of page two here. Uh, but I've got the text uh, elsewhere. So uh, uh, if you want to pause the video and read it, uh, go and knock yourself out. Uh, but I'm going to proceed. Uh, this is signed by Jennifer Ammons, the general counsel. And so what is the text that I am concerned about is uh, on the top of page two. And it says the statutes, and really it's all statutes, creates a rebuttable presumption of residency for anyone who meets the following criteria. However, no such person shall be considered a resident for purposes of this chapter unless such person is either a United States citizen or an alien with legal authorization from the U.S. Immigration and Naturalization Service. And so, again, if you don't have... That's what they Satanists do is they put these low intelligence border pigs and assault people. And, uh, and if you get into a contract with them, you just sold your soul. This is the international law rule uh, that's taken from the jurisdiction, jurisdiction over federal areas within the states. Uh, the report of the Interdepartmental Committee for the Study of Jurisdiction over Federal Areas Within the States, Part 2, a text of the Law of Legislative Jurisdiction submitted to the Attorney General and transmitted to the President June 1957. And this is pages 158 through 165. And um, it's not all of the text in those pages, obviously, where you see the dots is something's missing because it wasn't relevant to what I wanted to talk about. And so, uh, anyways, the international law rule adopted for areas under federal legislative jurisdiction federalizes state civil law, including common law. The rule serves to federalize not only the statutory, but the common law of a state. State and federal venue discussed. The civil law is effective in an area of exclusive federal jurisdiction are federal law, notwithstanding their derivation from state laws. And a cause arising under such laws may be brought in or removed to federal district court. Well, all of them can be removed into federal district court. And... Uh, and you say exclusive federal jurisdiction? Well, that is everywhere, folks. And this is National Mutual Insurance Company of District of Columbia versus Tidewater Transfer Company, 1948, U.S. Supreme Court. We therefore decline to overrule the opinion of Chief Justice Marshall. We hold that the District of Columbia is not a state within Article 3 of the Constitution. And in other words, cases between citizens of the district and those of the states were not included in the catalog of controversies over which Congress could give jurisdiction to the federal courts by virtue of Article 3. In other words, Congress has exclusive legislative jurisdiction over citizens of Washington, District of Columbia, and through their plenary power, that's military dictatorship, folks, nationally covers those citizens even when in one of the several states as though the district expands for the purpose of regulating its citizens wherever they go out throughout the states of the union and so it doesn't matter where you're at if you're in texas you're still in the united states you're in the district of columbia is where you're at if you're a u.s citizen okay u.s citizens don't have any rights u.s citizens are enemies of the state all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States. That's Article uh, Section uh, um, 1 of the 14th Amendment, or the so-called 14th Amendment. See, the so-called 14th Amendment is unconstitutional video. Uh, uh, United States e nations equals Roman law equals Roman cult equals statutory privileges. 
A citizen of the United States is a civilly dead entity operating as co-trustee and co-beneficiary of the Public Charitable Trust, the Constructive Sestake Trust of U.S. Inc. under the 14th Amendment, which upholds the debt of the USA and U.S. Inc. And that's a summary of five pages of the Congressional Record uh, dated June 13, 1967. Every taxpayer is a Sestake trust, having sufficient interest in preventing the abuse of the trust to be recognized in the field of this court's prerogative jurisdiction. Slater's protestations to the effect that he derives no benefit from the United States government have no bearing on his legal obligation to pay income taxes. Unless the dependent can establish that he's not a citizen of the United States, the IRS possesses authority to attempt to determine his federal tax liability. That's U.S. versus Slater. And so a U.S. citizen is a SESTA-K trust. This is D.C. code located at 31 Stat 1432. It says at the top, Chapter 854. Well, that's Chapter 854 in the, in the book, The Statutes at Large. And, uh, and then it's in Chapter 56 of the D.C. code, uh, Section 1617, the legal estate to be in the SESTA-K use. And this is more stuff from the D.C. Code, uh, which was approved March 3rd, 1901, by the 56th Congress at 31 Stat 1189. And right on the front page at Section 2, it says, And be it further enacted that in interpretation and construction of said code, the following rules shall be observed, namely, Third, the word person shall be held to apply to partnerships and corporations. Okay, so that's the U.S. citizen, the slave. And then in chapter 850, oh, I should say in section 252, which is located at uh, 31 stat 1230, it talks about presumption of death. Okay, remember we talked about presumptions already, and this is just another presumption that you're the slave. Okay, and you have to defeat their presumption. You're guilty until proven innocent. And so, uh, did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? And this is where all of that is codified at Title 15, United States Code, Section 44, definitions, corporation shall be deemed to include any company, trust, so-called Massachusetts Trust or Association, incorporated or unincorporated, which is organized to carry on business for its own profit or that of its members and has shares of capital stock or capital, uh, capital or capital stock or certificates of interest and... And it goes through the same definition, except it doesn't have shares uh, of capital or capital stock or certificates of interest. And so, and that's the SESTA-K Trust right there. That's describing it, among other things. This is the SESTA-K V Act of 1666 in the UK. Um, and um, where, uh, whether they've been alive or uh, gone beyond the sea, and this is page uh, two, and it says uh, the Sesta KV remaining beyond sea. Well, if you're in Roman law, you're at sea, okay? It's all admiralty, it's all contract. For seven years together, no proof of their lives, judge in action to direct a verdict as though the Sesta KV were dead. So obviously, the Sesta KV can be alive, and so it's it's. They just assault you with their Sesta KV trust and, uh, and, um, and then steal your property. Uh, this is uh, taken from Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition, volume 2, under the definition of Mort Main. Yet still it was found difficult to, uh, to set bounds to ecclesiastical ingenuity. That's the Roman cult, folks. For when they were driven all their, out of all their former holds, they devised a new method of conveyance by which the lands were granted not to themselves directly, but to nominal fiafis, to the use of the religious houses. Thus distinguishing between the possession and the use, and receiving the actual profits, while a season of the land remained in the nominal fiafi, who was held by the courts of equity, then under the direction of the Roman cult, or of the clergy, that's the Roman cult, folks, to be bound in conscience to account to assess to use for the rents and emoluments of the estate. Well, that's taxes, folks. And it is to these inventions that our practitioners are indebted for the introduction of uses and trusts, the foundation of modern conveyancing. And in 1835, it was the foundation of modern conveyancing. It still is to this day. And, and remember, if you want to be sovereign, everybody's sovereign. If you want to be sovereign, you have to have people, land, and resources. You need three things to be sovereign, and uh, all nations have to have three things, people, land, and resources. Now, uh, that's why the conveyancing was important, because without land, you're not sovereign. 
Um, all persons are aliens. United Nations equals Roman cult equals uh, uh, Roman law equals statutory privileges. And so all persons are aliens and sesticate trusts. All statutes are for regulating aliens. All statutes are international law. All courts are dealing with international law. And all judges fall under the United Nations and United Nations treaties. And their presumptions is slavery. Okay. Do you use commercial paper, then, then, which is Federal Reserve notes? Then you're a government employee. You're a piece of property. You're a slave. And see the Gold Reserve Act of 1934. See the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966. Did you pay a filing fee? Well, that's commercial paper. You're a slave. There are only two ways to file a lawsuit. By paying the filing fee, which is slavery or impecuniosity, which is just, just an, that's for U.S. citizens. That's another slave. Okay. Um, now, now I file lawsuits all the time, um, and uh, and they do everything they can to uh, uh, build their presumptions. But I've been to the Supreme Court now. I'm going again a second time. Uh, I should say a a um, fifth time, and um, and uh, and um, but so we'll see what happens. But I'm 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 getting it so that so that um, they don't uh, get to take their presumptions anymore. Anyways, there's only two forms of representation. Either you have a liar or pro se. And a liar is with a, is an attorney and a pro se is, is, is an attorney on his own behalf, a liar on his own behalf. All officers of their so-called court are foreign agents of the Roman cult. Uh, see bar members videos one, two, and three. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to click the bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified when there's a new upload. There's the front page and an arrow pointing at the bell. Uh, when you click on the bell, a pop-up will come up and a, and a box you have to check and click OK if you want to be notified. So this is all tied into uh, Unidroit, which is uh, the main, the primary mechanism of their slavery. Unidroit stands for the Unification of Private Law, which is law merchant, but it's you can do a, a private, a, a common law contract, and it's not under Unidroit. Anyways, uh, uh, the website says that 63 countries have adopted it. It's designed to be automatically implemented. Canada and the United States have been signatories to the Unidroit Treaty for over 30 years. The Unidroit website says nothing about Texas or Arizona, any of the American states or the Canadian provinces, and therefore it's federal areas only. Unidroit covers negotiable instruments, civil procedures, secured transactions, legal status of women, maintenance obligations, contracts, banking law, much more. This is their website. Let's get in close. Commercial contracts, cultural property, franchising. This is another page of their website. Uh, and you look at the header, uh, overview, Unidroit International Institute for the Unification of Private Law. And then their other part there is in French. And so, because that's civil law, Okay. Leasing, security interest, transport, banking law, capital markets, uh, uh, banking law, um, civil procedure, contracts, civil liability. Okay, that's all the courts. Okay, uh, um, cultural property, franchising, hotel keepers, insurance, intellectual property, leasing, legal status of women, maintenance obligations, movement of persons, negotiable instruments. That's all. That's got courts written all over it. It's uh, the 1955 Benelux Treaty on Compulsory Insurance, uh, Civil Liability in Respect to Motor Vehicles, 1958 Convention Concerning the Recognition and Enforcement of Decisions Relating to Maintenance Obligations Towards Children, and um, anyways, those are treaties that are involved that are associated with Unidroit. Uh, my contact information is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. That's my blog. My website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My email is engineerwin at yahoo. My YouTube profiles are Sovereign Living and Sovereignty International. Uh, my fa uh, Facebook community page, I deleted it due to censorship on the part of Facebook. And my private group called Sovereignty International on Facebook is being deleted. I had to ban 17,000 people off my group, and I'm not going to allow Facebook to profit from my hard work. My Yahoo private group is administering your public servants, and my Google private group is administering your public servants. And follow me on Twitter at EngineerWin. 
anyways, we're back to the Unidroid stuff. Uh, this is the uh, the member states. You notice at the top it says membership of Unidroid is restricted to states acceding to the Unidroid statute. Okay, so that's all municipal law. And uh, this is by no means all of the states. There's uh, basically, if you look, I've highlighted some that are of interest. Uh, Australia, Canada, uh, but there's also like most of Europe, most of South America, and China and Russia too. Uh, anyways, um, and so there's a bunch of uh, European uh, uh, states uh, and some in Africa, United Kingdom, United States, and some in South America. All judges are actually clerks, masquerading as judges. They're bail priests. Their black robe is their bail priest uniform. They routinely deny anything related to justice from happening because it's so good for business. They encourage their false flag operations and agent provocateurs because it's so good for business. They encourage police state murders, assaults, kidnappings, thefts because it's so good for business. Everything they do is a fraud and a lie because they're Satanists. Okay, they can't, they have to lie. Slavery equals guilt, un guilty until proven innocent, and that's exactly how they operate. Uh, indeed, no more than affidavits are necessary to make a prima facie case. Affidavits are commercial, okay? Affidavits are notarized. Declarations are common law. With a declaration, you, you need two or three witnesses, but you can also notarize it. I like to call them declarations and, and get it notarized. Affidavits uh, are, uh, are considered evidence if done properly, uh, and, and you have to be careful to make statements of fact and avoid opinion and conclusions. And uh, so um, I, that's what I stick to. And now another little uh, diversion. Uh, check out uh, my uh, 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 subscription-based YouTube channel called Sovereignty International. The recommended cost of the subscription is currently $1.99 a month because it avoids the advertising only. Originally, when I set up the channel, I was planning on having... Uh, some per, uh, uh, exclusive material but after thinking about it uh, you know the only power that these new world order satanists have over us is through their fraud and deception and my agenda is to expose it for all our benefits so um i, I can't imagine how much i'm not going to have much exclusive material on there i do have some i have a, a video on affidavits in particular uh, on how how i do them i also have um um uh, uh, Arlington private information share, but that's about it that's exclusive at this point. Uh, so I, I can't guarantee there'll be uh, anything exclusive other than what's already there, um, and, but I can guarantee that it'll avoid the advertising, so that's the best I can do. Uh, if you want to make a donation of $1.99 a month, it's certainly appreciated, it's mo appreciated, it's modest, but but every a bunch of people making small, modest donations, and it can add up pretty fast, so uh, it, it's appreciated. Uh, anyways, I'm currently publishing five videos a week, and some people had trouble finding the channel, so uh, there's a link to the channel at the bottom of this page, and there's a link to the channel at the top of the page. And uh, also, some uh, people made a donation, or at least uh, I wasn't sure if it was a donation, they sent me a dollar ninety-nine, And so I sent them an email, asked them if it was... Um, a donation or if they uh, wanted me to subscribe them or something because uh, and I offered to refund it because I have absolutely no power over subscribers uh, if you want to subscribe you got to click on the start tree free trial button I can't even see all the subscribers and so um, you're gonna have to click on the start free trial button and um, and uh, take it that way because I have no control over that and YouTube is going to want whatever YouTube's going to want. Anyways, so um, the Roman cult equals slavery, or slavery equals the Roman cult. This is Alberto Gentili, recognized as, as the founder of the science of international law. Remember the papal bull that came out in 1400s that started international law? Well, this... Uh, this uh, he's referred to the three men. Uh, uh, one of the three men referred to the father of international law is the earliest writer on public international law and the first person to split secularism from canon law and uh, Roman Catholic theology. And so uh, uh, again, uh, um, so there's there's uh, public international law and private international law. Uh, it says there at the bottom, it says he practiced in the High Court of Admiralty. Well, again, that's all Roman cult stuff, okay, where the continental civil law rather than the English common law was applied, right? Yeah, and so 
civil law is, is, is rights granted by government, or a common law is rights granted by God. And so uh, that's not surprising. So then there's the Statute of International Law Commission, 1947, and the International Law Commission shall have for its object the promotion of progressive development of international law and its codification, and the commission shall concern herself primarily with public international law, but is not precluded from entering the field of private international law. Okay, so, and, and uh, Unidroid is private international law. This is uh, the Hague Convention on Private International Law uh, concerning the ad international administration of estates of deceased persons, okay? And so uh, so if you look at this as the international certificate, that's the birth certificate, folks. And so um, uh, they don't tell you if it's a birth certificate or death certificate. It just calls it a certificate because it is a birth certificate. Uh, anyways, and, and if you read in further, there it is. If you read in further... Um, oh, if, if you look here at the top, uh, there's a footnote one in the title, and so then that's the footnote one. It basically says you, where you can find all this. Anyways, if you read in further, Article 22 says any person who pays or delivers property to the holder of the certificate drawn up and were necessary recognized in accordance with the convention shall be discharged unless it approved the person acted in bad faith. And so, again, they're talking birth certificates. This is all about birth certificates. Article 23, any person who has acquired assets of the estate from the holder of the certificate drawn up and were necessary recognized in accordance with this convention shall, unless it is proved that he acted in bad faith, be doomed to acquire them from a person who have power to dispose of them. This is all talking about birth certificates. And then there's trusts. Convention on the law applicable to trusts and their recognition. And and uh, again, this is Sesta K Trust, okay? Uh, uh, done on uh, 1st of July, 1985. Entered into force 1st of January, 1992. Done at the Hague on the first day of July. Anyways, Hague can, at the members of the Hague Conference on Private International Law. And so, uh, cubeyard.com. For great custom websites, domain names, and hosting, go to cubeyard.com. Use coupon code CY172 for 20% off your first order. Cubeyard.com, your source for websites, domain names, and hosting. Anyways, back to the topic at hand. Uh, the Death of London's uh, Roman Empire by Lyndon H. LaRouche Jr. And uh, so Lyndon LaRouche has an article here on covert geopolitics about London's Roman Empire. Okay, so uh, London was is an integral part of the Roman Empire today. And so this is all going to the Roman cult. United Nations equals Roman cult. A, a Roman law equals Roman cult equals statutory privileges. And this is the um, uh, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, uh, Article One, Clause One. All people have the right to self determination. By virtue of that right, they freely determine their political status and freely pursue their economic, social, and cultural development. Okay, these are all rights that are converted into privileges under under the Roman cult. Uh, the state parties to the present covenant, including those having responsibility for the administration of non-self-governing and trust territories, shall promote the realization of the right of self-determination and shall respect that right in conformity with the provisions of the Charter of the United Nations. Okay, so um, this is Article 2, Clause 1. Each state party to the present covenant undertakes to respect to ensure <clears throat> uh, all individuals within its territory and subject to its jurisdiction the rights recognized in the present covenant without distinction of any kind, such as race, color, sex, language, religion, political or other opinion, national, social origin, property, birth or other status. Okay, status is Roman law. And, um, and again, you see all that stuff codified in statutes, uh, you know, everywhere. Um, we're not already, this is Article 2, Clause 2, we're not already provided for by existing legislation and other measures. Each state party to the present covenant undertakes to take necessary steps in accordance with the constitutional processes and provisions of the present covenant to adopt such laws or other measures as may be necessary to give effect to the rights. And so, uh, Article 2, Clause 3, each state party to the present covenant undertakes to ensure that any person whose rights or freedoms is herein recognized are violated shall have an effective remedy, notwithstanding that the violation shall be, has been committed by persons acting in an official capacity, to ensure that any person claiming such a remedy shall have his right thereto determined by competent 
uh, a, a, a judicial, administrative, or legislative authorities, by the competent authority provided for by legal system of the state, and to develop the possibilities of judicial remedy, and to ensure that competent authority shall enforce the remedies when granted. And so, again, uh, this is all coming from the Roman cult. The state parties of the present covenant undertake to ensure that equal right of men and women. Okay, this is all just another form of slavery is what it is. Everyone shall have the right to recognition everywhere as a person. Okay, that's the slavery, another slave. No one shall be held guilty of any criminal offense on, a act, uh, on, on account of any act or omission which does not constitute a criminal offense under national or international law at the time it was committed. That's an ex post facto law. Nothing in this article shall prejudice the trial and punishment of any person or any act or omission which at the time when it was committed was criminal according to the general principles of law recognized by the community of nations. <laughs> so they throw all these little uh, clauses in there, those catch-alls. Uh, this is Article 18. Uh, Everyone shall have the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion, and no one shall be subject to uh, coercion which would impair his right to freedom. Okay. Well, that's that's First Amendment, okay? And and that First Amendment is an absolute right. That's that's statutory. And uh, and then you look in paragraph 3 of the same Article 18. Freedom to manifest one's religions or beliefs may be subject only to such limitations as are prescribed by law and are necessary to protect public safety, order, health, morals, or other fundamental rights or freedoms of others. <laughs> so they go and throw in all these little catches. We're at common law. It's an absolute right. The state's parties to the present covenant undertake to have respect for the liberty of parents. Uh, and so this is talking about children. Uh, Article 24, every child. So now they're talking about children. And that's all Roman law. Every child shall be registered immediately, right? Okay, so that's register the corporation. Every child has a right to obtain a nationality. So they want to get that corporation registered for the fictitious debt. Uh, Article 26, all persons are equal before the law, so they assault you with their person, and then say all persons are equal. And Article, uh, more Article 26, um, um, okay, in those states in which ethnic, religious, or linguistic minorities exist, persons belong to such minorities shall not be denied the right in community with other members of their group to enjoy their own cultural, to profess, practice their own religion, uh, or to use their own language. Um, Anyways, now a little diversion. Uh, check out my other videos, uh, Bankster Thieves 1, 2, and 3, Roman Cult Slates, Slave Scam Series, uh, Bankrupt Corporate So-Called Governments, Bar Members 1 through 3, Do It Yourself, How Not to Volunteer for the Selective Service in the Draft, Martial Laws Here, Do It Yourself, No Income Tax, No Sales Tax, Traffic Stop, Free Mail, and Kangaroo Courts. Um, so... All of this uh, uh, slavery is the Roman cult. And so all of these statutes are coming from the Roman cult. Uh, there's no common law offenses in the United States, only those acts which Congress has forbidden with penalties for disobedience. Um, under Texas law, no act or omission is a crime unless made so by statute. Uh, everything is an admiralty. A writ of error doth not lie upon a sentence in admiralty, but an appeal. Okay, so they sentence you uh, based on your this little contract. Okay, that's Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition. But they're quoting Book Four in Coke's Institutes on the Laws of England, which is uh, um, uh, 1500s. And so appeals are taken at admiral admiralty. That's why it's called a court of appeals. They're all admiralty. It's the same thing that precipitated the War of Independence. Uh, this is, uh, uh, statutes have been passed extending the courts of admiralty and vice admiralty far beyond their ancient limits for depriving us of custom and an estimable privilege of trial by jury in cases affecting both life and property to supersede the courts of common law and instead thereof to publish in order the use and exercise of the law marshal. And for altering fundamentally the form of government established by charter, we saw the miseries to which such dictatorship would reduce us. Uh, and that's causes and necessities for taking up arms, 1775. Um, and this is uh, a, a taken from uh, non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A.H. Ellett of the U uh, Utah Supreme Court in the case Diet versus Turner. And he says the same thing, except a little bit differently. In the meantime, civil law was the form of law imposed in the Roman Empire, which was largely, if not wholly, governed by martial law rule. Equity has always been understood to follow the law. To have superior equity is to turn things on their head. This is exactly what happens when martial law is imposed. If equity is the law, then it follows its own course, rather than following the common law, thereby destroying what's called common law and leaving what's called equity in its place. So, 
I mean, equity is mentioned in the Bible, but that's assuming that it's, it's going to follow common law. And uh, what he's saying is that uh, when you have martial law, there is no common law. And so, so then equity can do anything it wants. A penal action is an action on a penal statute, an action for recovery of penalty given by statute. So this is all, all slavery is coming from the Roman cult. All statutes are, are Roman cult statutes. Where an action is founded entirely upon a statute, the only object of it is to recover a penalty or forfeiture. Such action is a penal action. All statutes are for U.S. citizens. The words penal and penalty, in their strict and primary sense, denote a punishment, whether corporal or pecuniary, imposed and enforced by the state for a crime or offense against its laws. The noun penalty is defined forfeiture to be forfeited for noncompliance with an agreement. They assault you with one of their little contracts. The words forfeit and penalty are substantially anonymous. They're forging their signature onto a contract is what they're doing. A penal action is one founded entirely on statute. The only object is to recover a penalty or a forfeiture imposed as a punishment for certain specific offense, while a remedial action is one which is brought to obtain compensation or indemnity. A penal action is a civil suit, okay? So that's why the bail priest up at the front will... Uh, if you ask him, pin him down about what the nature is of the case, he'll say it's quasi-criminal. <laughs> um, uh, did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges, but individuals when acting as representatives of a collective group cannot be said to be exercising their personal rights and duties, nor be entitled to their purely personal privileges. Rather, they assume the rights, duties, and privileges of the artificial entity or association over which they are agents or officers, and they are bound by its obligations. They know that it's not you. But when that bail priest asks you, are you the name, and you say yes, you just agreed. Okay, that's one of the contracts. Whenever the Uniform Commercial Code creates a presumption with respect to a fact and provides that a fact is presumed, the trier of fact must find the existence of the fact unless and until evidence is introduced that supports a finding of its non-existence. And so... Um, what they do is they forge your signature onto a contract, and this is UCC 3.308. If an action with respect to an instrument, the authenticity of an authority to make each signature on the instrument are admitted unless specifically denied in the pleading. So if, if uh, they forge your signature onto a contract, and unless you dispute it, then, then, then you just agree to it. The following rules apply in an action on a certificated security, and they're selling it on, on, the, on Wall Street against the issuer. Unless specifically denied in the pleadings, each signature on a security a certificate or a necessary endorsement is admitted. If the effectiveness of a signature is put in issue, the burden of establishing effectiveness is on the party claiming under the signature, but the signature is presumed to be genuine and authorized. Okay, so they forge your signature onto a contract and they sell you into slavery. Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? These Roman cult Satanist bar members, whores, masquerading as a judge, forge your signature onto a contract and then presume it's authorized and authentic. And who's going to call a judge a liar? Even though the judge is a clerk masquerading as a judge, he's a bail priest. That's how they're populating the prisons. Carl Lentz brought up the issue of forgery against CPS when they stole his son in a successful one-page lawsuit. See the judicial whores video. He, the prisoner has as a consequence of his crime not only forfeited his liberty but all his personal rights except those which the law in its humanity affords him. He is for the time being a slave of the state. Okay? And that's where it is going. Okay? That's why these Satanists, they sell you into slavery. The Roman cult equals slavery. Slavery equals the Roman cult. That's all they can do. That's all they've ever done. That's all they will ever do. And the sooner we wake up to this, the better. If a man, and, the, and that's one of the first things these Satanists have to do, is get rid of common law, because at common law, they'd all be put to death. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel, maketh merchandise of him or selleth him, then that thief shall die, and thou shalt put evil away from among you. And, and that's Deuteronomy 24 and 7. So these Satanists need to be put to death. And we the people need to step up to the plate and take care of business, because otherwise we're going to be held accountable. 
International law is a subset of canon law. International law is uh, started with the Roman cult. Unidroid stands for the International Institute for the Unification of Private Law. Unidroid is located about 100 yards from the Holy See. Unidroid controls and governs the Uniform Commercial Code. Through Unidroid, the Roman cult has seized control of all courts. The Roman cult's bar members are already officers of all courts. See the bar members, one, two, and three videos. Get us out of the UN now. The United Nations is owned and operated by the Crown and their Roman cult handlers. See, the Crown is owned and operated by the Roman cult video. See, the United States is a Crown colony and the Crown owns and operates the United Nations 1 and 2 videos. Unidroit is coming from the United Nations. See, the Roman cult slave scam 1 video. United Nations maintains the international law collection, which is also coming from the Roman cult. They are using the Roman cult's international law rule to assault us with their fraudulent, fictitious Sestake Trust, U.S. citizen slave. And this is the Vatican's Holocaust, a sensational account of the most horrifying religious massacre of the 20th century by Avro Manhattan. Avro Manhattan was the world's foremost authority on Roman Catholicism and politics. A resident of London during World War II, he operated a radio station called Radio Freedom, broadcasting to occupied Europe. He was the author of over 20 books, including the bestseller, The Vatican and World Politics, twice book of the month and going through 57 editions. He was a Great Britain who risked his life daily to expose the darkest secrets of the papacy. His books were number one in the Forbidden Index of the past 50 years. And then if you look at the note there, it's 2017 now, so I guess that's 80 years. And his preface to the American edition is, The Vatican's Holocaust is not a misnomer, an accusation, and even less a speculation. It is an historical fact. Rabid nationalism and religious dogmatism were as two main ingredients. During the existence of Croatia as an independent Catholic state, over 700,000 men, women, and children were uh, perished. Makes you wonder if they were Catholic. I bet you they weren't. Uh, uh, many were executed, tortured, died of starvation, buried alive, or were buried, burned to death. Hundreds were forced to become Catholic. Yeah, those are the ones that probably refused. Catholic padres ran concentration camps. Catholic priests were officers in the military corps which committed such atrocities. 700,000 in a total population of a few million proportionally would be as if one-third of the USA population had been exterminated by a Catholic militia. What has been gathered in this book will vindicate the veracity of these facts. Dates, names, places, as well as photos uh, are there to prove them. Uh, they, they should become known to the American public not to foster vindictiveness but to warn them of the danger which racialism and sectarianism when applied with religious intolerance can bring to any contemporary nation whether in Europe or in the New World. This work uh, should be assessed with prejud without prejudice as a lesson but even more vital as a warning for the future of Americans uh, beginning with, uh, with that of the USA. Um, and um, I want to say that uh, this doesn't necessarily reflect on people that happen to be Catholic. There's friends of mine, some of my best friends are Catholic, and they're the ones that are feeding me this information. So, But the Roman cult is definitely satanic. It's well documented, some of the atrocities that they're responsible for. Uh, um, the uh, Spanish Inquisition, the, uh, uh, the murder of the Cathars. There's, there's, it's, it's well documented that for 2,000 years they've just been murdering people on a wholesale basis. And uh, editor's note, an armed Serbia could have easily prevented this Holocaust. Thank God for the Second Amendment to the Constitution, which guarantees the right to bear arms. Uh, freedom of religion and an armed citizenry go hand in hand and is the only guarantee that this won't happen in the U.S. And then at the bottom, the editors noted it's the Vatican's one world government. Gee, that sounds like the United Nations that doesn't want you to have the right to own arms or to use any means to defend yourself. Civil law, Roman law, Roman civil law, convertible phrases meaning the same system of jurisprudence, that rule of action which every particular nation, commonwealth, or city has established peculiarly for itself, more properly called municipal law, distinguish it from the law of nature and from international law. So th the bottom line is that they can't use treaties internally. Uh, did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? The government of the United States is one of limited powers and it can exercise authority over no subjects except those which have been delegated to it. Congress cannot by legislation enlarge the federal jurisdiction nor can it be enlarged on the treaty making power. So if you're a U.S. citizen, you're a slave, 
but you don't have to be okay you can be a state citizen did you give up your god-given rights for some satanic privileges but Madison insisted that just because this power is given to Congress, it did not follow that the treating power was absolute and unlimited. The president and the Senate lacked the power to dismember the empire, for example, because the exercise of the power must be consistent with the object of the delegation. The object of treaties and Madison's oft-repeated formulation is the regulation of intercourse with foreign nations and is external. And that's Bond versus United States, uh, uh, 2014. Today is enough to highlight some of the structural and historical evidence suggesting that the treaty power can be used to arrange intercourse with other nations, but not to regulate purely domestic affairs. And that's Bond versus United States, 2014. See the No Treaty Power Inside USA video. Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? All these statutes about freedom are a cheap imitation of common law that essentially convert rights into privileges. By this means, citizens' birthrights become of no effect and their rights are reduced to the inferior character of statutory civil rights, mere legislative privileges. And that's taken uh, from the non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by the Judge A.H. Uh, uh, Ellett of the Utah Supreme Court in the case Diet versus Turner. At common law, our rights are absolute rights. Statutes can and are changed. Statutes are ignored under certain circumstances. History is clear that the first ten amendments to the Constitution were adopted to secure certain common law rights of the people against invasion by the federal government. Every citizen and freeman is endowed with certain rights and privileges to enjoy which no written law or statute is required. These are fundamental or natural rights recognized among all free people. The people are sovereign and are not bound by general words or statutes restrictive of prerogative right, title, or interest unless expressly named. And that's People versus Herkimer. Taxpayers are not state citizens. Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? State citizens are the only ones living under free government whose rights are incapable of impairment by legislation or judicial decision. Whose rights are incapable of impairment by legislation or judicial decision. And that's Twining versus New Jersey. Uh, uh, state citizenship is a vested substantial property right and the state has no power to divest or impair these rights. Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? The state citizen is immune from any and all government attacks and procedure absent contract. Every man is independent of all laws except those prescribed by nature. He's not bound by any institutions formed by his fellow men without his consent. The rights of individuals are restricted only to the extent that they've been voluntarily surrendered by citizenship to the agencies of government. Did you give up your God-given right for some satanic privileges? And that bottom site is People vs. Herkimer, which I quoted already. It will be admitted on all hands that with the exception of the powers granted to the states of the federal government through the constitutions, the people of the several states are unconditionally sovereign within their respective states. U.S. Supreme Court, did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? A sovereign is exempt from suit not because of any formal conception or obsolete theory, but on the logical and practical ground that there can be no legal right as against the authority that makes the law on which the right depends. And that's U.S. Supreme Court again, and the courts have ruled that we the people delegated authority to the government, and, and they don't have authority to say anything to we the people. At the revolution, the sovereignty devolved on the people, and they are truly the sovereigns of the country. The citizens of America are equal as fellow citizens and joint tenants in the sovereignty. People of a state are entitled to all the rights which formerly belonged to the king by his prerogative. See the Do You Know Who You Are playlist. Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? A Roman cult equals slavery. Slavery equals the Roman cult. Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? The land patent is the monument of title, such title being absolute in its nature, making the sovereigns absolute freeholders on their lands. Finally, the patent is the only evidence of legal fee simple title. And, uh, and uh, the reason I put that in there is because there's a lot of uh, bail priests, liars, and, and uh, well, lawyers, no, liars, uh, anyways, that go around saying that the people are, are sovereign collectively and not individually. Well, that's a bunch of garbage, okay? Right there, it says it, that the people are sovereign individually. We all, each of us are. Did you give up 
your God-given rights for some satanic privileges. The power which is derived cannot be greater than from that which it is derived. That's a maxim of law. Bouvier's Law Dictionary, 1856 edition. The power which is derived cannot be greater than that from which it is derived. Okay, And so, again, uh, uh, we the people, that goes back to basically saying what this says. That sovereign is exempt from suit, not because of any formal conception or obsolete theory, but on the logical and practical ground that there can be no legal right is against the authority that makes the law on which the right depends. And that's, that's exactly 100% right. That's that maxim. Anyways... And then there's the Clearfield Doctrine. Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? Governments descend to the level of a mere private corporation and take on the characteristics of a mere private citizen where private corporate commercial paper and securities is concerned. For purposes of suit, such corporations and individuals are regarded as entities entirely separate from government. That's why you cannot pay their extortion. And this is Downs versus Bidwell. Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges, eliminating then from the opinions of this court all expressions unnecessary to the disposition of the particular case and gleaning therefrom the exact point decided in each, the following propositions may be considered as established. That the District of Columbia and the territories are not states within the judicial clause of the Constitution giving jurisdiction in cases between citizens of different states. Um... And uh, that the District of Columbia that the ter and the territories are states, as that word is used in treaties with foreign powers with respect to ownership, disposition, and inheritance of property. That's the Sestake Trust and that they're talking about there. And it's also talking about how in the, D in the U.S. Code, it's, it uh, defines the United States as... Uh, it'll say uh, United States and the states, and then it'll say and uh, and uh, Guam, American Samoa, and Puerto Rico. And what they're essentially doing is they're saying the states twice to confuse people that are ignorant or ignorant. Um, and number four, that the territories are not within the clause of the Constitution providing for the creation of a Supreme Court and such inferior courts as Congress may see fit to establish. So there are no courts, okay? And that's why in Rule 45 of the U.S. Supreme Court rules, it says that all uh, uh, mandates that come from the Supreme Court are issued by the President of the United States. Okay, there are no courts in in uh, in in the D.C. and the territories. Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? Uh, uh, the United Nations has nothing to do with state citizens. United States participation in United Nations only applies to U.S. citizens, the District of Columbia, and the territories. There are no real courts in the District of Columbia and the territories. There are only kangaroo courts where you're a slave, okay? You're presumed, you're presumed guilty until proven innocent. A, a kangaroo court is a term descriptive of a sham legal proceeding in which a person's rights are totally disregarded, in which the result is a foregone conclusion because of the bias of the court or other tribunal. It's, it's a kangaroo court. They're nothing but a bunch of Satanists. Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? And this is Downs versus Bidwell, the dissenting opinion of Justice Harlan Marshall. Marshall Harlan, I should say. <laughs> Two national governments exist. One to be maintained under the Constitution with all its restriction. The other to be maintained by Congress, outside and independently of that instrument. Why do you think that Nancy Pelosi, as Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, says they have to pass legislation so they can find out what he says, what it says? It's because it's, it's for D.C. and the territories. Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? Thanks for watching. Uh, 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 spread the word. Uh, Roman cult equals slavery. Slavery equals Roman cult. Have a great day.